Well, tonight we come to offer this memorial mass for our deceased members of the Knights of Columbus, especially those who died this past year. We pray for the happy repose of their soul and the comfort of their family and friends that are here tonight. What I'd like to do tonight is really talk about the, the life and spirituality of our founder, Blessed Father Michael J. McGivney, and look at his life and see how he lived and how he died. What an inspiration. We were blessed that our founder was just beatified a couple of weeks ago, October 31st of last month. And when we look at the life of Father McGivney, we see first that he was a man of faith, a faith that he inherited from his mom and dad, very devout Catholics, immigrants from Ireland. And they suffered a great deal in Ireland with the famine. They came to America to start a new life and to hold on to their Catholic faith. And they had 13 children. I think they should be beatified as well, right? Just for having 13 children. And I'm sure that they're great saints in heaven as well. As you know, not all of them survived to adulthood. I think about six of them died in childbirth, at childbirth or in infancy. But his parents had a strong faith and they passed that on to young Michael. And they experienced hardship you know, coming to America at that time, uh, a great deal of poverty, a lot of anti-Catholicism. Um, and so there were, was persecution of Catholics and it was very difficult for Catholics to get good jobs. So his father had to work in a factory. In fact, Michael had to leave school at age 13 to help, help support the family. And so, but he was a man of strong faith, again, which he inherited from his devout mom and dad. And really that was where the seed of his vocation was formed, was in the family. That's why the Knights of Columbus are so um, committed to strengthening family life, because that is the first seminary, that is the domestic church, it is the family. And the seeds of his faith and vocation began with his mom and dad. And then Michael, Father McGibney was a man of deep prayer, as all of us members of the Knights of Columbus should be, men of prayer. What were his prayers? First, the Mass. His life as a young boy, as an altar boy, and then as a seminarian, then as a priest, was centered on the Mass and the real presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. He devoted his life entirely to Christ and the Mass. So we too should be especially devoted to the Mass. He also loved the Holy Rosary, as, which he learned from his parents. And as, as you know, all the members of the Knights of Columbus are encouraged to pray the rosary every day and to have a strong prayer life. And then as a priest, of course, he prayed the divine office, which we call the Liturgy of the Hours. If you've never prayed that, I would highly encourage you to learn how to pray the Liturgy of the Hours. Morning prayer, evening prayer, night prayer. It's so rich, so beautiful. So I do hope you'll consider uh, praying the Liturgy of the Hours. And then Father McGivney was a man of love. Think of his great love of God, his love of neighbor, his love of family, his love of immigrants, his love of widows and orphans, and his love of the persecuted, the poor, the suffering. His desire as a young priest was to do something to help the, the suffering people, to help the persecuted, to help families, especially when the breadwinner of the family died suddenly in, in an accident, what would happen to the widow? What would happen to the children? Sometimes families would be split apart and some of them were sent off to live in other f homes that were not Catholic. And so he wanted to make sure to keep the family together, his great love of the family and probably trying to help widows and orphans, the poor and the suffering. He was a man who fostered unity. He saw that there was strength in unity. As you remember from your you know, first degree, we can now talk about the degrees. Remember the piece of rope. It's very easy to break one little piece of rope, but put 10, 20, 30 ropes together, you cannot break them. There is strength in unity. And so he realized that in order to be strong, especially as immigrants, as Catholics, we have to be united and have strength. And then 
he promoted fraternity. He knew that we have to have good friendships, good Catholic friendships, good Christian friendships to strengthen our faith. It was hard to come to a new world when there was persecution and anti-Catholicism. So he said we need a brotherhood to be able to join together and to keep men Catholic, husbands, fathers, because so many of them were going off to join the Masons and other secret lodges and Masonic lodges. He said, let's have a Catholic fraternal organization to help keep men Catholic, keep good, strong Catholic friendships and a brotherhood. And then he was a man of patriotism. He loved our country, he loved America, and he encouraged patriotism among these you know, two dozen men that met in the basement of St. Mary's Church in New Haven, Connecticut. He said, we need an organization that will be patriotic to show our love of God, our love of our faith, and our love of our country. And that's why he chose Christopher Columbus, at that time the most famous Catholic, right? The Italian that came over to discover the new world. And then Father McGivney was apostolic. In his own life, he would knock on doors in the, in the parish boundaries and visit families. He would go into the prisons and visit the men on death row visiting them time and time again until they were willing to make their confession and have their sins absolved and to get ready for their death. So he was a very apostolic. And again, that's why he chose Christopher Columbus because Columbus brought the faith to the new world. He evangelized the new world. And Father McGivney says, we need to be apostolic and share our faith with others, not keep it to ourselves. He died at the age of 38, only being a priest for 13 years. Imagine what this young priest, he founded the Knights of Columbus, he was in his 20s. Imagine only being a priest for 13 years and he changed the whole world today. Two million members of the Knights of Columbus throughout the world. So he wanted men to be able to defend the church and defend their faith. And that's why he called them the Knights. Originally, you guys were called the Sons of Columbus, but that, would, that name did not last very long because he realized we have to develop virtue, especially the virtues of a knight. Uh, courage, dedication, discipline, chivalry, all these things, the virtues of manhood, virtues of, of good Catholic men should be not just sons, but they should be knights. And so they became known as the Knights of Columbus to encourage virtue and holiness. And lastly, of course, he had a great love for the sanctity of life. And we, of course, live this out by being thoroughly pro-life and especially to protect the unborn in our country. And we know that the miracle that occurred uh, a few years ago that brought about his beatification was an unborn baby. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? This unborn child who was the 13th child in this family was a little boy and they said they would name him Michael and they prayed for the intercession of Father McGivney, at that time venerable Father McGivney. And a miracle took place. This, this fatal disease that this child has was completely cured. And the Pope recently beatified Father McGivney because of that a visitor session for little Michael, the 13th child in that family. And now the child's about five years old and, and doing well. And so that's, I think, such a great message that it was an unborn babe that brought about the miracle. So let's never forget to pray for the protection of the unborn in our country and throughout the world. So in this night, this night, when we remember our deceased members of the Knights of Columbus, we pray for them, for the happy repose of their soul, for the comfort of their families. Let's also remember the life, the virtues, the holiness, and the saintly death of Father Michael J. McGivney. So we ask through the intercession of Blessed McGivney, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.